Hey guys, so today I'm gonna be gonna be streaming about the development of a game for the hyper casual uh, game jam. Let me show you here. Okay, so this is the one. So I'm participating in this game jam, and it finished tomorrow. And the idea in this jam is to create a hyper casual game, uh, and the theme is about feeling or feelings. So first of all. Uh, I didn't know a lot about hyper casual games, to be honest. So I had to research a little bit about what are hyper casual games, how they work. And so I did like a really small research and but I got to this website that has like the top 10 game mechanics for hyper -ca casual games. And it's, they are really simple games. And so I think this is a really good challenge for a game jam because they are really simple and it's like really easy to create a prototype for these kind of games. So I got interested and I decided to participate on this jam. And so in terms of mechanics, we have like tap and timing mechanics, stacking mechanics, uh, turning, dexterity, rising and falling, swerve, merging, idle and growing and puzzle mechanics. So I got, uh, I read about all this uh, 10 types of mechanics and try to figure it out what I was going to create with the, uh, with the theme of feelings. Initially, uh, the first idea that I had in terms of uh, creating something with, um, with the feelings uh, theme was my, my brain went immediately to something with a heart, you know, like uh, feeling stuff or feelings. And I said, okay, maybe I can create something with a heart, like tapping for increasing the heart rate, something like that. But I didn't actually like figure it out what to create. So then I kept thinking about new ideas and eventually I got to the idea that, okay, so if the term, if the theme is uh, feeling or feelings, maybe I can create something about how I feel, how a person feels. So I feel stressed, anxious, uh, sad, happy. So feelings in that sense. And so I went, okay, so I can create something like this. And this got me to, okay, maybe I'm going to use something with the brain. And then I decided, okay, so I'm going to create something with the brain. And where uh, we have like uh, bad feelings, like, uh, I don't know, sadness, for example. And the brain is being filled with sadness and we are trying to eliminate that bad feeling from our brain. So that was like the main idea that I, I got this morning just before I started developing. So and then I start researching about it. I, I went, I start searching about like brain um, illustrations and cartoons and stuff like that. I got to this like neural networks uh, and stuff like stuff like that and then i got to these uh, diagrams and these illustrations with this aspect and i said okay maybe i can create something uh with this you know i can create something with uh, this layout and i really like this one i say I, I saw a bunch of them i even saw this one looks like a, a subway subway line that i thought maybe i can have like something uh, just moving around on these lines and we have to change uh, and switch lines uh, switch lanes actually uh, to achieve something but this one was like the one that I really liked and initially like, the first time that I look at it I said okay maybe I can create something like this with the brain and something with a mechanic like this game like Pipe, Pipe Mania I don't remember exactly this one this is like the original one but I remember that I played like versions of this one later on and basically this game you have to create like a, a pipeline from start to finish and you're gonna have like you you receive like random pieces of pipes and you need to connect the pipes to get from one point to to the other at least from what i remember i remember that i played uh, different uh, variations from these ones uh, i remember that some other variations were not exactly like this. You had like all the pipes already on the on the screen and you just need like to turn the pipes in order to connect them in a proper way. It was a little bit different. And I thought, okay, maybe I can create something like this with the brain, you know, with the connections inside the brain. But I was not able to, to get like a proper uh, mechanic out of it with the brain and everything. So then I thought about something a little bit different. So I went to this image and let me show you here. So what is the idea right now? And I thought, okay, so maybe we can have this and 
these can be like um how can i say it this can be like neurons and you are going to be controlling like the synapses like the um, the energy that you you send from one neuron to the other one um like synapses i think that's the word i'm not entirely sure but so that's the idea and um, here what i'm thinking about creating is that we are going to start or the player starts for example oh, let me show uh sorry so the player starts controlling one neuron here we can we cannot see it because it's white let me just so even more so for example the player starts with one active neuron and the computer is going to start with a neuron where we have like the the bad feeling in this case let's say let's call it like sadness so the sadness is on this neuron and it's going to be like propagating to all the other one the other nodes on the brain and we start in this one and we need to reach these nodes to eliminate those nodes from that uh, that feeling and the idea here the, the behavior is that when we are on uh, the selected uh, node this uh, arrow right here is going to be like rotating let me see if i can rotate here so the idea is that this is going to be like constantly rotating <laughs> with the correct anchor point but it's going to be constantly rotating and the player just needs to tap the screen to send like the synapse to send the the energy from this uh, neuron to some other one that he wants to to target and the idea is to create a path to reach this one and while the player is doing this the other one so the the enemy is also going to be doing this so the enemy is going to be also rotating and just firing uh synapses all around to propagate the the bad feeling and so the objective is just to eliminate all the bad nodes and to create like a path with uh, good nodes something like this i'm not in, uh, i'm not uh, entirely sure if this is going to be like the end mechanic so the main mechanic is this one we have neurons we have like good ones and bad ones we control the good ones we need to eliminate the other ones uh, i don't know yet if maybe the idea is also going to be like um filling all the nodes with a, a good feeling instead of the bad one or if it's just eliminating the bad ones i need to test the mechanic to see if it works so but this is the main idea then i went with uh, creating a path so initially I, I thought about okay i'm going to create like this shape and then generate like random nodes when I say nodes, it's like the neurons, it's the same. And then uh, generate random nodes inside this area to fill this area with uh, multiple nodes that we can just control throughout the game. And I tried to to do that, but it was really hard, to, to be honest. <laughs> and so I just decided, okay, this is just a prototype, so I'm just going to like fill this uh, by hand in the engine, and then eventually I'll create uh, an automatic system to just like randomize this a little bit and let me show you what i've got so far so my idea at the beginning was to use a different game engine so i'm, I'm used to work with unity and this time i thought okay maybe i'm going to use some new game engine that i don't know about i was thinking about like game maker or construct something like that but to be honest uh, when i woke up i didn't feel like <laughs> uh, learning a new engine today and since the deadline for this is tomorrow, I said, okay, then I'm going to waste a lot of time just like learning a new engine and everything, and that's going to like hurt the, the whole game. So I prefer to create like maybe a little a game that's a little bit better and using an engine that I already know. So I just went with Unity and let me show you what I've got so far. So this is what I've got so far. So I used that image, like I said, I created all the nodes by hand. So you can see here inside the network uh you have all the neurons <laughs> right here that i just placed so i put the image uh in the background and just place the nodes on top of the other ones from the image and then i have already also implemented uh, some code to generate this um this network because even if i have although i have like a static points for each one of the nodes i decided to create some um a randomize uh, to randomize this a little bit so you can see that the the nodes that are currently with a lighter color they are active the one the other one so these ones are disabled so these ones are probably the ones that uh 
that we are going to use in the game. Maybe now that I'm looking at it, maybe I need to, the disabled ones, I need to put the color even, like reduce the opacity of these ones. So you can see like a bigger contrast for, from what you can uh, interact with and what you cannot, but we'll see. And so far, what I have here in my code is that when I'm creating the network, it's going to randomize the size of the nodes. So each node that I call neuron here, I have a prefab here. You can see that each um, neuron, I already have a script where, let me show you. So this is basically the, the neuron and you can have like the base one, which is uh, the circle. And I have the target, which is uh, the arrow that we're going to have like when we activate the neuron, which by default is disabled. And I already have a script where I can just like, I mean, I just uh, assign the references to these, these sprites. And I have the colors of the neuron. So the default one, the enable player, the enable enemy. So we are going to see this in a little bit. And I have a min scale and a max scale. And I'm using this because when I'm creating the, the network, despite having all the static locations of all the neurons, when I'm generating the network, I'm going to be like randomizing the size of the, the nodes. So it looks a little bit different and it also becomes easier or harder because if you have like bigger nodes, they are easier to target. If they are smaller, they are a lot more difficult to target when you are sending the synapses between the, the nodes. And this is what I'm using. And so here in the network, I also have the total percent of um, neurons that I want, because if I put like 100%, I mean one, and I build a network, you can see that all of them are active, uh, enabled, not activated, all of them are enabled. So if we start playing like this, I could like target all these nodes and I can also control the amount of nodes that I want in that level. So I can I put like 50% of nodes, I build the network and you can see that it randomizes not only the size of the nodes, but also the the ones that are active or not. Yes. Which is okay, yeah. And so this is what I've got so far. And I also have here in the neurons. So for example, not this one, let me select this one, for example. Um, I also have set player and set enemy. So you can see that when I set player, it the neuron is gonna is uh, it gets the, the player color. If I select another one and I set enemy, it's going to have like the enemy color. And the idea was also to activate the neuron. It shows the, um, the arrow. So when I activate the neuron, it shows the arrow. And if this is playing, the, the arrow is going to be like rotating constantly. And then the idea is for the player to tap and to uh, fire the synapse to another neuron. To, so it can move uh, across the, the network. And this is where I'm at uh, right now. So let me just, oh, I cannot deactivate. Okay, I can just build, build it again. No, not one, 0 0.5. Okay, build network. Yeah, so this is what I've got so far. Also, uh, as you can see, I'm not uh, running the, the game in Unity. So I have all this working on uh, edit mode. Let me just show you. Oh, I need to put the code here, yeah. Okay, so this is the code that I have so far. So I have an enum for the player type, and this is the one that I'm using to, to say to a node, okay, you are being controlled by the player or you are being controlled by the computer. Then I have the neural network, which is uh, the script that is responsible for creating the network and eventually managing the network. I still don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with it, but so far it's uh, only responsible for creating. So I have this method here, build network, which, uh, gets all the the neural uh, the neuron um, components in the children and then enables the neurons according to a random value. So I calculate a random value between zero and one, and if it's uh, less or equal to the total percent of new of nodes that I want, I just enable or disable the node accordingly. And then I have a custom editor. That's why I could control, I can control everything from the, the inspector, you know, without running the actual game. Uh, I, I, I usually create custom inspectors for most of the scripts that I create in Unity because it gives me the ability to just test specific uh, functions without running the game. And each function should also be able to run without having the game run. So I can test the behavior if it's working correctly. So right here I have a, 
a button that just calls the build network method. And also when I start the game, I also call the build network. So I can control it from here to generate a new pattern of nodes. And when I start the game, it will also generate a new one. And besides the neural network, so I, al I also have the script for the neuron. And right now, the only thing that it is doing, it has like three methods that I'm using, which is the enable one. The enable basically sets the default covers. It when it's enabled, it changes the local scale according to a random value between the mean and the max and changes the color uh, if it's enabled or not. And then I have the set player type. Set player type, basically what it does right now, it just assigns the correct colors to the node, to the node and to the, um, to the arrow, which I call target. Not the best name, but I didn't remember a, a better one. And I have the activate method, just enables the, the target, which is the arrow, and it enables this component. And what I'm going to do here is that when we enable this component, then the arrow is going to start rotating. That's the idea. And I also have a custom inspector so to test all these methods without uh, heavy, having the game uh, running the game. And so, okay, so this is it. Right now, what I was dealing with was creating the, the rotation of the, the target of the arrow. So, like I was showing you, when we activate the neuron, I enable the render target and I enable this component. So as soon as I enable this component, the update method will start running and this is where I'm going to be rotating the render target. And now that I'm thinking, probably I would create a new script for the, the neuron target, but I think I don't need it right now. So maybe I'll, if I need it, uh, I will create it. I don't know, let's see. So right now, what I need is the speed that the, the target is going to be rotating. So private float, uh, let me call it rotation speed. And basically what we are going to do here is that render target is going to be like rotating, uh, not transform, rotate, and we are going to be rotating it regarding 2D. So we are going to be rotating it on the Z axis. So Vector through, uh, vector through, no, vector through, not forward. I'm not entirely sure. I always mess up this kind of things, but let's see. And time delta time, so it's frame rate depend independent and something like this. Let me just see if this is what I want. And so here yeah, I need to enable because otherwise I'll need to ex execute the script in edit mode and I don't like to do it. I also have, I always have like bad experience doing it. So I prefer to just do this, activate. And if I set the speed, yeah, now it's rotating. Okay. Okay, we can just control the speed. So this is rotating 90 per second. Let's see if I did 180. Okay, 180, yeah, 180 degrees per second, that's it. Now I need to test it to see if it's like really fast or not. Uh, it depends. Maybe it's also one parameter that I can change uh, throughout the levels, like some nodes maybe rotating faster than other ones. I also thought about something like that, like the, the size of the node would um, influence the speed that, at which they rotate, something like that. I still not, I'm still not sure. So, but 180, it works, and maybe they are going to be rotating to the right. Yeah, because probably, I don't know if the player is only, always going to start on the right. Oh, maybe it's random. Now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, maybe it's going to be random, you know. Rotates right or left, it's going to be random. So the player needs to adjust to the to the direction of the rotation when it's like trying to tap at the, uh, the correct moment. So yeah, I'm going to put like 180. I think it's okay. So this rotates. And now what I need to do now is to send the um, array cast. Probably array cast, yeah. I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to do array cast. So, but if I'm going to do array cast, I need a collider here on this prefab. 
So let me just see, I'm gonna put like, yeah, a box board. 2D. And I'm just gonna, uh, I'm scaling this one, yes. Yeah. So if I'm scaling this one, it's not a problem. I was thinking that if I should put it this here on, on the neuron, it's the same, actually. Yeah, it's the same. But this one has a script and I'm going to be using if the node has a script or not to identify if it um, hit uh, a correct neuron. So probably I'm going to stick with this one. 0 0.5, 0 0.4. Yeah, that's the one. And 0 0.4. Okay, so it has a collider. And this is what we want. Why can't I see the collider? Ah, I disabled the gizmos. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, so it's correct. Uh, so this is what I want. And now what I'm going to do is when the player taps the screen, I'm going to send uh, a raycast and see if I can hit any other uh, node. And when I hit an another node, what probably I'm going to do is like disable the last one and enable that one. Something like that. I also am thinking that if I should, if I should um, uh, store the whole path of nodes that are going to be activated, because I still I'm not sure uh, what happens exactly when the like the enemy nodes can like deactivate mine. Imagine that you are, for example, on I don't know on this node right here, and the enemy is on this one, and it shoots, and it just disables the one where you are at. So what happens to the player? If I have a whole path of nodes that took the player there, then the player will start again from from the previous one. Or maybe I'll just generate a random one. Still not sure, but we'll see. Uh, so here, what I want to do now is to create a raycast. So I don't know what kind of input I'm using. Let me just see. I'm using the old input manager. Okay, so if I'm using the old input manager, and I'm going to need to change it for mobile, but right now for testing, I'm just going to use it uh, the space the space key. Yeah, so which is easier to do right now. So if when the neuron is activated, oh, and, but that's only going to happen if the player type is equal to or i mean it's this neuron is only going to be able to yeah it's going to be able to shoot when the player type is equal to uh, human or a player i don't know how i call it player it should be human human computer yeah but whatever uh so let me see i'm going so if i need to access the player type then I'm just gonna declare a new one, not this one, a new one here. When I set player type, I'm gonna store it, not this one, I don't know why. Okay, I'm gonna store it here, and then here I'm gonna do something like if player type is equal to player, Actually, I'm going to do the reverse. So if it's not equal to player, so if it's equal to the computer, I do a return. If it's equal to player, then I can just do what I want, which is get key up or down. Let me see. So when I press, no, down, let's see down. I think it's going to be more responsive. It's down. Uh, key code dot space. And here we are going to shoot. And this is going to shoot the um, try to to catch another neuron. Okay, so here what I need is a raycast hit to D, so hit, and I also need a ray. I don't know if I need a ray here, but we'll see. I know that the hit I need, but uh, let me see. So in here, what I do is physics to D raycast. And vector two and origin and direction. Okay, maybe I don't need a ray. Then I don't think I need a ray. Yeah, so I'm gonna do a ray cost on physics 2D because we are working on 2D and the origin. But 
basically it's where we are at so transform dot position and the direction so the direction is let me see the direction is in, related to the the render target right so here what i need to understand is the render target let me see it's the up vector of the render target mm. Not entirely sure, but no, discard. Let's try it. So, render target dot transform dot up. This is the green axis of the transforming world space. Yes, I think this is it. Not entirely sure, but yeah. And oh, the distance is going to be like I don't know if I have infinity. Yes. And now I can have like out hit. No. Oh, hit. No, this is not the one that I want. So distance, layer mask. Let me see. Oh, this is not the same as the the 3D one. So this. Oh, it has like an array of results. Okay. Why do I have a, an array of results? And not a single result. I'm not sure. I usually don't work in 2D, so. <laughs> Acting Raycast uh, Unity Raycast 2D. Physics 2D Raycast is the one I want. Okay, so. Okay, accept this one. So let me see. In the results array, yeah, okay, it's always a result. Hmm. And it's not a reference, so what they are doing here is physics 2D, up, hit. Oh, it uh, it returns the hit. Oh, okay. Because the 3D is different. The 3D, it accepts like a reference to the hit inside the, the method as an argument. So here it returns. Okay, even better. So, so this is not an if statement here. So I'm going to do something like this. And maybe I don't need this one as well, because it should assume that it's infinity if I don't pass it. Okay, and so if hit not new, which means that we just... Oh, let me see. Random is probably better. Uh, okay, where was I talking about the random? Okay, so it's not new, so this is not, I cannot do this, the collider. Oh, because the hit is never new, yeah, it's always true, yeah. So the, the collider is not new, okay. I'm gonna do, I usually prefer to do something like this. To be honest, I'm now, this is, a practice that I picked up, you know, like using the return on the same line uh, to prevent uh, continuing the execution. But to be honest, when I'm using an um, when I'm using it on an update loop, for example, I'm trying to understand if it's a good practice or bad because when you are an update loop, this might be worse than having like multiple if else conditions and stuff like that. But I still, I'm still going to keep with the, this practice and then I'll see if I change it. So if hit.collider equals no, we return, so we don't have like um, a hit. But if we have a hit, we want to see if we hit um, a neuron. I don't have anything else in the game, to be, uh, to be honest, but we'll see. Okay, random rotation is better, yep. Okay. I think it actually creates um, a bigger challenge for the player because you can you need to like tap and you need to 
be aware if it's rotating to the right or the left. It might create some confusion when you are playing, but I think it's a, a bigger challenge, yeah. So, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, hit dot collider equals no, we return. Then we have a collision. Now I'm gonna check if we collided with a neuron. So usually what I do here is that I just check if the heat, um, I have the transform, yeah. So I just check if the heat, to the transform of the heat has the component that I want, which is case is the neuron. And if the neuron does not exist, then I just return, which means it, it's not like a valid, uh, I don't need this one. It's not a valid collision. Probably this is not necessary right here, but since I need to access the, the neuron component anyway, it doesn't hurt. So um, if neuron equals new we return, it means I, I hit something which was not what I intended to. And if I hit a neuron, basically what I'm going to do is that I'm going to activate that neuron and I need to deactivate the one that I, where I'm at, but we'll get there in a moment. So what I'm going to do here is activate. Activate true. And I also need to say that this is of the player type. Actually, I'm going to need to change this. And basically what I'm going to do, actually, I can do something like this. Mm, let me see. Yeah, I can do it because this is the same code that I'm going to need for the enemy. You know, the only thing that is different between the enemy and the player is the way that we are going to be triggering the, the ray cost. So if it's a player, we are going to be uh, checking for the input from the player. But if it's the enemy, we are going to be like randomly shooting uh, right. Yeah, I'm thinking if it's completely random because if it's completely random, it might never get another neuron, but we'll see. And basically what I need, if it's going to be like uh, randomly shooting uh, ray costs, I need like a, a time delay between um, between shots. So I'm going to add here. And this is going to, this is getting like really, I know I'm going to say crowded, but uh, the, the configuration you know, all the variables of the configuration are becoming a lot, which means that probably I'm going to create, mm, probably I'm going to create a new, a new script, yeah. I have a lot of them already, so I have like, uh, I don't know, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah, I don't like this, so. And I know that I usually uh, create a lot more behaviors or scripts than necessary, but I really like to like create smaller scripts with specific behavior. I think that's usually that's a convention, but I usually go too far with it. But in this case, I think it uh, it makes sense. So we have the neuron and then we have the neuron. I'm not going to call it target, but I don't have an, any other, I don't have like a better name for it. Yeah, like shooter, neuron shooter, it's strange, I think. Yeah, target, whatever. Neuron target. And this, this is going to be the one that's going to deal with the rotation and all that. And then I can just like separate the configuration and uh, like separation of concerns. This is like a hyper casual jam comp. This that I'm doing right now, it's like my, this is a, my structure for all behaviors and all scripts that I'm using in Unity. I always use this, this structure that you can see right here. And I need to create like a template, you know, <laughs> so at every time I create a new script, it automatically uh, creates the entire structure, but I didn't get to it so far. Uh, okay, uh, editor, and if, and here we have like a custom editor of type neuron target, and this one as well, and this one. This is for the custom inspector. I don't know if I'm going to need it, but I think that I am, so I'm going to create it right now. Uh, neuron target, and this is a target. And this is the on enable. And target is going to equal that one. It's correct. And uh, override on inspector. And this is it. Oh, some other thing that I usually do is something like this. So I create a space, and then I just create a, a label to separate from the custom editor from the, let's say, the normal editor. Uh, label field, and I call it like editor. 
I didn't do this in the other one, so I'm gonna do it as well. So the neural network is gonna have this as well, and the neuron is gonna have this as well. Uh, let me see here. Okay. Wait. Here and here. Neuron target. Okay, so this is it, and now what I need to do is take what's from the neural target to the neural target uh, from the neuron. So here in the variables. This is no longer going to be like a hindered target. Doesn't make sense anymore. So now this is a neuron target. And you're going to call it target. And if anyone remembers a, a better name for this, uh, please tell me. Because I don't like the, the target name here. Uh, so the default cover, enabled player, enabled enemy. Oh yeah, even these covers are not uh, are going to because the enabled is for the the base neuron and the active was for the target, and this is not very understandable. You don't understand what what this means, so I'm probably going to change this to the other one as well. Uh, the disabled alpha can be here, and the rotation speed. So this one is from the neuron target. Uh, header configuration. And I also, also always use headers for my variables. So I usually separate my variables on the mono behaviors. I usually use three different kinds of, kinds of headers. So I have the configuration, which are just configuration values, are usually values. You don't have like references in the configuration. Um, then I have a references header, which is for references for other game objects or components or prefabs, whatever, that are outside of that object. And when I mean outside, that they are outside of the hierarchy of that object. And then I use another header. I started using it uh, recently. I use a, another header for references that are inside that object. And I'm still not completely convinced if I should use like public references or if I should like search for those components and references um, in code, you know, like uh, get component in children or get component, stuff like that. I still don't have a a rule about that i'm still trying to figure it out but i've been using like a header with the inner which which means that inner are like references to uh, inner components or game objects stuff like that uh, but i'm probably going to change it um, still i need to create a rule for that uh, so usually what I'm, I'm doing right now is that when it's a component that is directly applied to the same game object where we have the script then I use I get that component from the script on the awake method. If it's not, I usually assign on the inspector. I can see both like uh, advantages and disadvantages on both approaches, so I'm still not sure which one to use. Uh, so rotation speed and neuron. So this one was from Raycast heat. This is going to be from for the neuron target as well. And the whole update. It's of the neuron target, to be honest, yeah. Yeah, this all is for the neuron target. Oh, it has a player type. So I need to pass the player type to the neuron type. So this one doesn't need uh, the player type, or this one needs the player type. No, the target is the actually the one that's going to be using it. Yeah, so I'm going to pass it to the neuron target and we'll see. Uh, so here, now we don't have the target anymore, so... Yeah, this makes a lot more sense. I don't like like be using the other one, like rotating the other one and using the the up vector of the other one. So this is itself is uh, it's rotating itself and using it, its own transform dot up. I think it makes a lot more uh, sense. And neuron. Okay, so this is it. So when I enable, okay, now I have to still change a few things here. Okay, the target colors and stuff like that. So. Hmm, let me just see, because now I need to change this. Okay, this is not going to be like the active player and active enemy. Uh, these are going to be here. And this is going to be like the target. I mean, it's going to be like cover player and cover enemy. Yep. And we are also going to need public void. We don't need the enable. Uh, oh, we do need the enable. Uh, probably. Yeah, I'm going to have the enable anyway. Uh, but we'll see if I need it or not. 
and I'm gonna have the activate as well so activate enable I'm gonna have this as well and um, but we'll see if I need it or not so target enable yeah because I, I don't want to be doing this so when I enable this neuron I always gonna be like disabling the target and right now I can do something like this and this is also a practice that I've been like picking up uh, like picking up you know like I usually don't like to set that use the game object set active or to enable or disable components outside of the object I prefer to have a script that does that for me so it's easily easy to easier to trace the whole flow that is uh, enabling or disabling that object that's the only reason and uh, okay so the target does this and the enable let me see target.color the default color oh this one does not have a default color yeah so mm, okay here what i need as well is since this is going to be i'm going to be like adding this to to the sprite let me see yeah i'm making <laughs> i'm turning this into a lot more complex than it needs to be but whatever uh, so neuron and the target I'm gonna apply it. I don't like applying the scripts directly on the sprites, on meshes or stuff like that. Mm, so, yeah, I'm gonna create like a root for this one. I don't like doing that. So, yeah, prefer to create a root. And this one has a target. And this is the one that is gonna have the neuron target. Oh, yes, I still have errors. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do that in just a bit. So, here, for example, is the one where I'm using. I'm gonna use the um, the get component, yeah. In children, uh, like I said, I still don't have like a a proper rule about this. So in children, uh, so I still have errors, yeah. Okay, neuron. We have this. So when we enable the neuron. Or disable the neuron, it doesn't matter, we always will reset the target. Okay, makes sense. Then I set the color of the neuron to the default color. I change the scale of the neuron, yeah, and I change the color of the neuron. Okay. When I set the player type, now I'm not doing this here. Yeah, I'm gonna recreate these methods here. So public void. Hmm. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I should. I could have this on the on the method there where I'm activating the player, but we'll see. And here, so I do all this. So I enable color, enable player, and active player. So render base. So and I'm gonna have to do all this again for the target. Hmm, not very happy with this implementation because I'm like duplicating some code but mm, yeah i'm gonna keep it like this uh so not active color it's gonna be just color color and here we have color player and here we have color which a color enemy and how did i call it sprite oh, i'm not gonna call it sprite sender just sender and here i'm gonna say okay render color equal color i could also have ideas like in the ternary but it will be a really big ternary so yeah uh okay so here i'm gonna do the same so this one is color 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 blah, blah, blah. this one and this is no longer sender base it's just tender Okay, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, neuron target. Okay, and now when we activate the target, yeah, this is not what we do. What we do now is we enable uh, like this. When we activate this neuron, we enable the target. And we can only activate. And I need to change the color as well. Hmm. Yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, it doesn't make sense to have the set player type uh, separated from the activate because I don't need to say, okay, you are 
the player type uh, player and now activate because I don't need to set the player type because I'm not activating the actual node. So probably doesn't make sense to have to have it like this. Uh, let me think about it. Mm, yeah, maybe the activate is gonna have like it's gonna have the player type. Or not, because if I wanted to keep, because on the other hand, if I want to keep the player type, even if the node is not activated, for example, if I want to keep track, mm, no, because when I activate, I change the player type and I activate the node, so it starts rotating. But then I activate another one, but I'm not going to change that one. I'm going to deactivate that one, so it's going to stop rotating but the player type is still the same hmm mm, i'm not entirely sure right now about this because I, I enable and i do this and here i activate no sorry are my dogs sorry <laughs> Someone is making noise outside. So, the render update. Mm, I need to think about this for a bit. Yeah, okay, keep changes. Okay, what I want to do here is that I'm going to put a neuron, okay, neuron target here. And I say like 180. Then I'm going to put this like a random. And let me see. And here I want to do like, okay, so the sprite sender is this one, this is the target. I'm going to call it like sprite, sprite. And so the default color, I need to change this all as well, but. Oh, and I change. Hmm. Okay. Not exactly what I wanted, but so, okay, I lost the colors that I had here. That's the problem with the inspector, but yeah. Not the problem, the problem is mine, but yeah. Uh, so, cover player and the cover enemy. What I did here, so it could be a little bit different from the main cover, I just put it like light, something like this. It's like more, more vivid cover on the target. And this one keeps the same colors, but now I need to change also these, these names here. No, no, not these ones. And I'm gonna lose the, the values as soon as I change the, the name, so. That's why I added to the swatches. So cover player and cover enemy. This is all the same. Now let me see. Now I can hear yeah, and I lost the cover, so now I, but I have the swatch, so it's okay. Yeah. Uh, and target is already assigned, this one as well, this one as well, and we have the sprite, so this doesn't matter. And yes, okay. Hmm. Set player, set enemy. Now I'm thinking about like this whole set player and set enemy functions. Um, how am I going to do this? Or what do I need to actually do? Uh, the best way to do this, you know? Because when the game starts, so we have all these nodes. When the game starts, the game is going to select like a random node for the player and a random node for the. Um, so, a random node where the player starts and a random node where the enemy starts. That's the idea. And when it starts, yeah, it's going to activate the node. So I'm still thinking if I need to separate, like have set player and activate, because if I'm going to be doing always the same thing, you know, I'm going to activating and setting the player, it doesn't make sense. So I can activate and set player, and I can have a method for deactivate instead of using like the Boolean in the parameter. So when I say activate this node, I send the player type. And so it changes the color of the, the neuron, it changes the color of the target, it enables the target, and when I do deactivate, it just stops the target, but the player type of the neuron is still the same. I can have something like that. But then I need to also keep track of the player type, not on the target, but probably on the neuron. Hmm.
Yeah, so this is not the one. Mm. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one here probably doesn't make sense here because I'm also going to need it here. So, and it makes more sense to actually store it on the neuron because it's like the main entity, it's not the other one. And when I activate, so I'm not going to have this. When I activate, I activate this with the player type. And this as well, no, this is not enabled. And I don't need this one here probably. No, oh, this as well. default color and then I just change the alpha when I enable it just do this and changes the alpha okay that's correct here I set the player type which I won't be doing it here anymore so the idea is that I'm gonna be doing this on the activate okay Not entirely sure about all this, but let's see. And uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, no, <laughs> nothing. None of this makes sense anymore. Okay, uh, so in the neuron target, we don't have this anymore as well. So I just say, okay, the yeah, activate the neuron target and I send the player type. I still need the enable and disable. That I'm gonna need for sure and here well, I'm gonna just save the player type here as well okay not very happy with this but we'll see what we get out of it uh, player type uh, player type blah 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 yeah okay render cover and activate and then when we activate we should enable enable this one and then if it's a player type we're gonna wait for the input if it's not a player type we are going to wait for the time something like this yeah i could use coroutines instead of the update method but i don't know if i need to store this but okay we'll see so i just when i activate this node And I also activate the target with the player type. Actually, not this one because if I don't, I need to change it later. I don't need to have it here. So this is stuff about the color, and this is the act to activate the target. And so, okay, public. This is enable. Okay, let me see here. Okay, so. I'm just going to create this one here, uh, enable, and here let's say, okay, enable, uh, how do you call it, editor, we lay out, bull field, no, uh, toggle, bull, toggle field, enable, something like this. And instead of a button, I can actually use this one. Uh, begin. No, it's not this one. It's the editor GUI. Begin, chain check. Yeah, this one. And it begins. And if editor GUI and chain check here, I'm just gonna do like target dot enable enable. Wait. Something like this. Yep. And I also am going to do with for the activate. Let me just see if this is working. First of all, yeah, I did a lot of changes and I just broke <laughs> everything. But okay, okay, here for example, I cannot, I can no longer. It was all because of this, but yeah. Uh, well. Okay, let me see. Yep, okay, so when it starts. 
generates a network okay and now for example let me get like this node for example here on the neuron enable it's enabled okay <laughs> yeah okay of course every time i enable and disable it just um, changes the scale but i'm only going to do this uh, at the beginning so it's okay and the other one which is the play the act to activate with the player type okay so i can use um player type player type and here we have a player type and i think we have a field for enums yeah enum pop up i'm never sh um mm. I don't know if I need anything else. Oh, I need a type of. I need to say what kind of email of enum I am using. I think it's something like this. No, not like this. Okay, so selected. Oh, okay. Nope, not like this. Cannot implicit. Ah, it's because I need to, I think I need to pass to one. Yeah, that's the one. Here I'm not going to be doing like a chain check because I don't want to activate every time I change the player type. So here I'm going to actually use a button. And when I activate, I'm going to use the, the player type that's on top of this one. I'm going to run because I don't want to um, to store this. So if I activate it with the player, yes. If I activate the computer, okay. Enable, disable. Activate. If I disable, enable again. Okay. Yeah. So this is it. And for the neuron target, let me see. I need to do the same. So enable, disable, and neuron. Just like enable and disable the the render, so I'm probably not going to create like a custom editor just for that. So when I activate, I change this, so I change the color according to the player type, and I enable. Okay, when I enable, now here is where I'm going to make, I need to change this. So, because I'm going to need to call this from different, uh, different locations. If I'm the player, I'm going to call it when we input. If I'm the enemy, I'm going to call the raycast when the, it passed in enough time to raycast again. So, uh, private void, I'm going to call it shoot. I think this is okay. And I don't have anything okay, so. Mm. So, I no longer use this one. So I'm going to be rotating, and here, if okay, I'm going to use base else. If player type is equal to player and it shoots else. If and here, I'm going to use the time. So I need a time uh, private float uh, shoot time, and also I'm going to need. Um, a time delay. Mm, time delay. Short time. Shoot time delay. Mm, probably going to be a random. Yeah, it's not going to be exactly. The... Okay, right now I'm not, not going to do random. I'm just going to do shoot time delay. Okay. So when I activate. And I only need to do this when it's a computer. So the shoot time is going to be not delta time, but time dot time. So like, okay, I activate at this moment, and it's going to wait for the time delay to perform the shot. So I'm not going to shoot immediately. Okay, shoot time, blah, blah, blah. And so if it's a player and, a oh, no, I cannot have something like this. No, 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 I can have it like this. Because, yeah, because if I have the condition like this, what's going to happen is that if it's the player, 
and the, the player presses the key down, then it runs this. But if we are the player, but we are not pressing the get key down, I'm going to shoot this one when the time uh, is right, so I cannot use this. But so I can click a return, uh, not a return key. I'm going to do a switch. Player time. Player break case player computer break. Mm. Then I just refactor this later. So if I do this, I could create like a really big condition with all this, but I think this is more readable. And so if it's a player, I'm just gonna wait for the input and shoot. If it's the computer, and if time dot time is greater than uh, shoot time plus uh, shoot time delay, then I'm also gonna shoot. And when I shoot, let me see. Yeah. Right, everything. I just set the time shoot time again to time dot time. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Uh, blah blah blah. Let me just see if it's working. Shoot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so neuron and prefab the target. I don't know, like three seconds. I don't know if it's a lot or not, but let's see. And so I'm gonna activate this one as an enemy. And after three seconds, we should have like a, a log. Okay, shoot, wait three seconds, shoot again, wait three seconds, shoot again. Okay, so this one is working. Oh, I cannot deactivate. And discontinue there. Yeah. <laughs> when I disable it, does not deactivate. But I don't know. I'm actually not gonna do, gonna be doing it in the game, so it's not a problem so far. And when I activate the player, let me see, and I press. What? Oh, it's <laughs> yeah, it's because the this starts enabled. I can actually just make sure that this doesn't happen. I don't like to do this, to be honest, because sometimes when I do this, I'm calling some other method and after the or before the start. Sometimes it happens when we instantiate the object and then we call another method before the start and then to enable the object and then we the object actually starts and disables the object again and it creates a whole mess. But so I think in this case I'm not gonna have a problem. What I'm thinking about creating is creating a like a custom attribute for not for the, the field but for the class, where we say that okay, so this component should start disabled. And what that would custom attribute would do and I'm not sure if this is possible, but this is one idea. What uh, that custom attribute would do was uh, it would, it would um, disable the component in edit time. You know, when we are playing, where before, just before we play the game or before we build the game, stuff like that, it would just change all those components and disable all those components. And then it wouldn't need to be doing that at random. But once again, I didn't <laughs> got to do it. So eventually. Okay, so I'm gonna activate this one. Well, let's see. This one, activate. Okay, not working. Because I didn't enable the component. Yeah, okay. So, blah, blah, blah. Mm, yeah. Enable true. No. What? So I activated. Yeah, I activated the target with the player type, it enabled the component. It's here, enabled, true. Hmm. Let me see what's happening. So I have this neuron, yeah, and the target is disabled. But I came here and I say, okay, activate with player, it changes the color. Hmm, but this one is not 
being activated. Why is that? So neuron, and I'm calling this one. Mm, okay, that is correct. Yeah, that is correct. Target activate player type. I do all this, and then I do target activate, and I do all this. No, oh, it's not because of this. No, because it's start already. Oh no, because I mean, <laughs> yeah, I cannot say it here. One second. I think this is exactly the problem that I was talking about. Let me just check. Yeah, but I think this is what I think I was enable enabling the component, but as soon as I enable the component, the start runs and disable the component. On the awake, it should work. Yeah. Because the awake runs uh, if the component is enabled or not. So that's why it works. What was happening was that, I don't know exactly, the, not exactly the problem that I was talking about, but another one that I didn't think about it is that I'm enabling the component, but since I have on the start, I have enabled equals false. As soon as the component was being enabled, it was disabling itself. That was what was happening. So that was the problem. Now it's working since I, I pass it into the wake method. We don't have that problem because the wake, wake runs even if the component is disabled. It only it doesn't run, if I'm not mistaken, it doesn't run if the game object is disabled. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, okay, so activate, shoot to, okay. Okay, so it shoots. Oh, but it's not rotating, right. Ah, because we are not enabling the we are not enabling the renderer. Okay, probably I'm not I'm not gonna need this one or no I'm not gonna have the enable here. We just activate the target or not, and so we render enable true. Then I'm gonna create a, a deactivate method. So let me see. Okay. This is what I want, and the other one should like this one, and I could just here computer activate and should also do the same. Yep, that's it. This is it. And when I activate the node, what I wanted to do also, I'm gonna join this too. What I also wanted to do is to change the rotation right to be like a random to the right or to the left, and yeah, basically what I'm gonna do is I can do that on the on the start method. Yeah, not on that one because every or every now every time I I activate the node, I'm gonna change the the rotation. So rotation speed is gonna be uh, I'm gonna multiply it. Uh, it's like not random, not random range, random value. If it's like greater than 0.5. It multiplies minus one, otherwise it multiplies by one. And let me just try something here as well. Public deactivate. Because I still don't have this one. And here I'm gonna do GUI layout dot uh, <laughs> deactivate. Uh, button deacti deactivate. Oh, another cool tool that I could create was that I could have like something to generate uh, the custom inspector for all the public methods. That would be awesome. Oh, I know. I can think about it. Yeah. Imagine that we have a tool that I can just run on all components or when I'm editing the components at the end, I just run it and it will generate this custom inspector with uh, the parameters and everything to call each, each uh, public uh, method that we have on our class. That's something that I'm gonna note down to. So take no, uh, take note so that I can probably uh, implement it later. Uh, so deactivate. Okay, in here we call target deactivate. Okay, so let me see. Okay, we have the deactivate here. So when we deactivate this, the player type is the same. We don't actually change anything. We just 
tender enabled equal 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 <laughs> equal false and the enabled also equals false. So we stop shooting and we just hide the the target, the rotation thing. Okay, so let me see. I put it here and I'm gonna activate neuron and then I can just like deactivate. Actually, this should be on the same. Hmm, yeah, I need to create this on the same. Yeah, but the rotation is changing. Okay. Cool. So, this is the behavior. Now, I was shooting. I was actually shooting, but I was, I'm not, like, um, hitting anything. <laughs> so, let me see. Probably what I'm going to do here is right, right, on draw this selected. And if not enabled, I don't want to be showing anything. But if it's enabled, yeah, basically what I'm gonna be drawing is a line or a ray. See, you see, yeah, transform position, transform dot up. Yeah, that's basically the ray that I want to show just to see if I'm shooting correctly or not. Uh, let me see. So, activate this one, and yes. And when I do this, what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I'm hitting the, the neuron is like hitting itself with the ray cost. Oh, I don't have a name. Transform name. Yeah, this one works. Let me see. Really strange. Activate. 73. Yeah, it's hitting itself. Why? We are shooting from inside the collider, so I shouldn't have a problem, right? Hmm. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna change this. So okay, mm, I could like ignore itself, but okay, the best way just like maybe put um, like a, a shoot uh, point at the at the at the tip of the of the arrow, something like that. So inner. And that's where I'm gonna be like uh, shooting from. Uh, how I'm gonna call it? Not shoot point. Shoot point is really lame. Um, doesn't make sense. So, what am I gonna call it? Shoot target? No, I mean, I mean, yeah. If this is a target, I'm gonna call it shoot target. Yeah. I still need to changes so when i'm shooting i'm not going to be shooting from i don't need to transfer from the shoot target position okay and now here on the neuron i'm just going to create so i have the target i'm going to enable the sprite here and the target is going to have like this one here which is the shoot target and i'm just going to move it here maybe a little bit in the middle yeah because now the collider yeah the collider is here so it's okay and something like this okay so now i can disable the sprite and this is it let me see now i'm going to enable the same one so 73 <laughs> what? Oh, because I'm shooting from all of them. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Not exactly what I wanted, but we are closer. Uh, getting close to it. So, okay, shooting, because when I activate the other neuron, 
or after I, I activate the other neuron, I'm just going to deactivate myself. That's the thing. I'm going to deactivate myself and then activate the other neuron. Yeah. Let me see. Mm, okay, so this one. Like 70. Okay, activate this one. Okay. Okay. Oh, it cannot be disabled. Okay, so when it's disabled, activate, deactivate. So this one, when it's disabled, I need to disable the, the collider because right now I'm hitting the, the ones that are disabled. So collider to be collider here on the awake, collider, get component, collider to be and here on the enable blah 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 and here um, the collider collider dot enabled equals enabled okay and i also need to create like an effect when i'm just uh, shooting uh, the ray you know so that we can we can actually see it uh, so here, let me see, neuron, okay, and computer, activate. Oh, it hit this one. Okay, cool. Now it's not hitting any, anything. Oh, it hit, hit the same one? Okay, okay, it's not a problem. It's always hitting the same ones. Oh, because <laughs> because of the time. The time is the same, so it's okay. Yeah, okay. The time is the same, and the rotation speed is the same. So eventually, it's gonna hit always the same ones. So I need to say like the time cannot be like static value. So we can have like shoot time delay, and we can have a shoot time delay variation. Hmm. On some time delay variation, so uh, so like imagine like ten percent or some something like that, you know. So when I shoot, oh, but now I need to change it on two different two different uh, here. Mm. Mm, okay, now here what I'm. Okay, now here what I'm gonna do is that the shoot time, the shoot time. Okay, here is gonna be the same, yeah. But here the current delay. Okay, here the current delay is always gonna be. Uh, equal to the shoot time delay and here the current delay is going to be equal to the shoot time delay times the time delay variation yeah mm, now i'm thinking about should it be equal to the shoot time delay variation or to the time delay time delay variation yeah okay yeah, it really really depends yeah okay Mm, so target time delay variation so let's say that it's going oh no 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 it's not like this no it's not like this so the current delay uh, let me think about it. the current delay is going to be equal to because if i put there like 10 percent it's gonna change between the time delay minus ten, like the time delay minus ten percent, and the time delay plus ten percent. I can do something like this. I mean, yeah, okay. So random dot range between the shoot time delay times one plus. Time delay variation, 1F. 
and this should time no minus and this one times one <laughs> I think I'm doing a lot of stuff for something really simple but I'm not I'm not to remember uh, an easier way to, to do this right now but yeah I'm positive that there is a really simple way to do this okay a neuron so target it's gonna say like I don't know 20% Let me see, I'm gonna activate this one as an enemy. And actually I need to hmm, I actually need to like activate the the shoot, you know, like the race when we are shooting so I can see what's happening. But oh this is always going to hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, something like this. Hmm. Hmm. Not very convinced with this to be honest. Let me see if I oh, okay, should then do it. One. Okay, I need to implement the the actual shot, you know, so I cannot see I'm not able to see anything. So and the shot, how I'm gonna make the shot. It's just a line. Maybe I can use a sprite render. I'm not sure, let me see. Um, okay, so I'm gonna call it synapse. I'm not, in, I'm not sure if you pronounce synapse, but synapse, yeah, okay, let's call it synapse, okay. And here I'm gonna create an effect like a, a trial, a line. Oh, okay. Oh no, it's not a line that I want. No, 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 no. It's a trail. Because a line, I think it's between the static points. Not sure. A trail is what I want, I think. Yeah, because when I, I move the trail, it just. Uh, why? Why is not like. Is that in the trail? What? Oh, maybe I cannot move the actual trail. I don't remember the last time I I worked with the trail. So, okay. Oh yeah, but the trail disappeared. Okay, I don't. Know. Uh, so trail rendered. No, this is a really weird. Okay, time. Oh no, time five seconds. No, like one second, half a second maybe. And the width is going to be like 0 0.1. So it's like here, but it's going to shoot like here, and here, and here. Okay, let's see. And I also need to change the color of this one. Oh, the color is like, can use a gradient. I want to need to do something with the. The same color as the um, as the player or the the enemy, the computer. So it's going to be something like that. And now I cannot see it. Why? Hmm, should be zero, right? Or or in layer one, no, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I'm not sure. Let me see. Lightning, no. So. Okay, I'm gonna start first of all shooting this stuff and then I'll see. So, I'm gonna call it Synapse. The Synapse. Uh, 
Okay, so we have here. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, and region HC. Let's see here, here. Mm -hmm. Private trial handler trial. Here I'm gonna do the, um, get the trial from the in the get component. Yeah, there's no. I think there's no need to uh, get component, but it's get component in children. What? Oh, it's in the I uppercase. Okay. So this is it, and now I have a set color, a public void uh, set color, color, color. Oh, but now the color is like a, a gradient. Okay, uh, so this is the start color, the end color. I'm gonna keep the same. I think the start should be the tip of the trail, probably. Set cover, and then I'm gonna move. Set it. I'm gonna say it to move, and it's going to move to a target, which is gonna be the other neuron. I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't need to know it, it's a, uh, a neuron or whatever. It just need to know that okay, you are going to move to this point. So vector three, move toward uh, transform position. I'm gonna create uh, another. Vector 3, which is that one, and I'm gonna call it speed since I don't have it also. So here I'm gonna have a new one, private vector 3, called target position. Shit, okay. And and here on the head. Error. I'm gonna set the configuration for this and let me see configuration here serialized field blah 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 speed should have like duration but I'm gonna try with speed and here target position equal with target not target I'm gonna call it position and I'm gonna enable and here when if what <laughs> if transfer position is equal to the target position it means that we reach the target i'm just going to destroy i mean i'm not like destroying and creating new objects so i'll probably just create like a synapse pool you know to reuse the object but right now i'm just going to go with uh, creating and destroying uh, synapses yeah. so uh this is it and now the neuron target Ah, uh, this is not the neuron target, this is like the synapse shooter. Okay, that will be a, a cool name. Uh, okay, I'll change it eventually. So here, inner references, and here what I'm going to have is like a, a reference to the prefab of the synapse. Synapse, so I can instantiate new prefabs when I'm shooting. So I'm going to do all this. Update, activate, uh, not, uh, let's see, not this one, so here, and so I'm gonna activate neuron. Oh, neuron activate, not, I'm not gonna activate, no, I'm not gonna activate the neuron, I'm only going to activate neuron when it's hit by the synapse. Hmm, okay, so maybe the synapse is not gonna move to a vector 3 position, it's actually going to move to a neuron. So actual synapse needs to know about the neuron. I could also say, okay, move to this position and tell me when you get to the position so I can just uh, change it. But I think it makes sense. I think it makes sense to for the synapse to know about neuron. We'll see. Neuron dot transfer dot position is a target position. Okay. And I need to also, actually, I don't need a target position. No. I just need to change. I need to store the neuron reference here, 
So I mean the mirror is not gonna change positions, but either way, because I'm gonna need it, so transform that position. I don't like have to have like these lines with this length, so I usually do this something like this. So when it's here, it's gonna destroy and it's going to activate and I need the player type. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. So I don't have Ah, but then I don't have a color. Hmm, no, I'm not happy with this. Yeah. Okay, no. No, no, no. I'm not happy. So I'm not gonna do this. Let's go all the way back. Because the synapse is knowing already too much. You know, and the synapse need to know about the neuron and need to know about the player type and the colors and I mean it's a lot of stuff, so it doesn't make sense for the synapse to know, to know all that much. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a delegate to just warn that, okay, uh, I reached uh, the target on target reach, uh, and it's a synapse, synapse. I could also use a, a callback, but an action, actually, but I prefer to use these ones. Target reached. So it does all this. And it destroys, but before it's going to invoke the target reach. Just before destroying this all. And now, on the neuron target, I'm not going to activate this one and deactivate this one. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to instantiate a new synapse. I didn't create a prefab. Oh, uh, prefab. Synapse. I'm going to instantiate the synapse. I'm going to say to the synapse, okay, when you reach the target, let me know. And I'm going to create a method to here about this. And this is where I'm going to do all this. And ah, but then I don't have a neuron. Okay, I'm gonna save the neuron here because neuron target. Okay, it hit. Uh, player type. No, this one is here. That hit. And private neuron. Neuron. Okay, so here let's do something like this. If neuron neuron. Nah, nah. Here neuron activate. Deactivate the target. Activate the other one and. Since I'm destroying the synapse, I mean, it's not a problem. I mean, I could also do something like target reach equals null and then destroy it so I don't have like memory leaks. And uh, target reach, blah blah blah, synapse move to the neuron dot trans. Hmm? Oh, it's no longer this one. Neuron dot transfer dot position. Okay, so let's see. Oh, the problem is that if the synapse does not hit anything, I need to check if the synapse is out of the screen or something like that. Yeah. Okay, speed, I don't know, 100. It's a lot probably, but we'll see. Okay. Oh, I need to set the color. Okay, I'm gonna change this to a method. Private color get color of player type player type. Hmm. And I need to also change this. Okay. Hmm. I can change that. Okay. In just a bit. So I don't know. I don't need all this. So here, what I usually do when I have like this sort of situation, I just return directly on the same line. I think it doesn't like, and if it's that, if it doesn't um, affect like the readability of the code. Return color dot 
Okay. And now here I can just say, okay, get color with the player type. And here I can also do this, even if it's a player, because if it's a player, I'm not going to be like dealing with this. I either add a condition to say, okay, if it's not the, if it's a computer, then set its values, or I just set the values either way, and then I'll use them. I don't know. I'll just say it, leave it like that. And here I can do the same thing. Oh, I actually didn't, mm, I actually didn't need to do this. <laughs> okay, yeah, I have the, um, I could just send a render color. Mm, okay, yeah. I didn't need to create this one because I'm just calling it from here, but okay. Hmm. Uh, let me see, I think it's all... Yeah. Okay, let's try it. So we have this one here. Neuron. Player activate. Oh, I didn't... Uh... Yeah, 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 okay. I can set the, the reference to the preset, the synapse, okay. Let's activate this one. Activate. Ah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not setting the, the trail in the correct position. So when I shoot, I instantiate the synapse and then I set the synapse transform dot position equals to transform dot position. No, equal not to transform dot position, but equals to shoot target position. That's a lot of stuff already. Uh, okay, so something like this. Yeah. And maybe I'm going to put like really slow so we can see it. What? Hmm. Really? Why? Hmm. I think it's probably something with the uh, local position and stuff like that, yeah. No, but it's okay. What? Uh, sign up. Oh, the trail is like, I don't know, somewhere. You see, it has something to do with this. Yep. That's the thing. Oh, I know what I need to do, yeah. I need to deactivate immediately this one. When I shoot, so I'm gonna send, yeah, when I shoot, I'm gonna send it. But if I only activate the neuron again, when the, the shot reaches somewhere, I think that's a cool, a cool thing because then we actually need to time the shoot when we are shooting. So when we shoot, I do all this, blah, blah, blah. Here I deactivate. Oh, okay, yeah, but this is not correct. No, this is not correct. No, so I'm shooting. I'm only creating a synapse when I'm actually hitting something and that doesn't make sense. So what I need to do here is that I'm always creating a synapse. But then it's not moving to a, posi a specific position. It's going to be moving in the direction. 
Mm, okay. Yeah, so I, I'm not using the Raycast. No. I thought I was going to be using the Raycast, but I'm not using the Raycast. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Because if I'm using the Raycast, then I'm only considering when I'm actually hitting an object. And that's not what I want. I want to, like, just shoot. Yeah, I just want to shoot, you know, and send the synapse and if the synapse hits something then I'm gonna say to the guy okay yeah I hit a, a neuron or not and then do your thing so this is not correct okay but let me see one hour and forty okay uh, so I need to change this but this is what I have so far <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna continue this in a bit I'm gonna stop now so you can see here, okay, let me see if I just increase the speed a lot. Yeah, okay, now we have. What I want, yeah. And you can see, because now I'm just I can be like tapping, you know, but I'm not actually shooting because the Raycast is not hitting anything, so it doesn't shoot, and that's not what we want. So I'll just come back in a bit. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you uh, are watching and if you enjoyed it, I hope you enjoyed it so far, and I'll come back in a bit to just continue with this. So let's see. Uh, hardware stuff here.